Hello guys, uh, in this uh, section we are going to learn concepts related to round robin scheduling algorithm. Okay. Now the round robin scheduling algorithm is designed specifically for time sharing systems. Okay. A small unit of time called as time quantum or time slice is defined. Okay. And this time quantum is allocated to each process. Okay. What does it mean? Suppose again, we'll take one small example. We are having some processes P1, P2 and P3. Okay. Which are having burst time like 24, 3 and 3. Okay. Now, if we apply a round robin scheduling algorithm to this particular chart, we, we, we have to define one time quantum. Okay. Now, say for example, time quantum here is 4 millisecond. Okay. Now, this burst time is also in millisecond. Okay. Now, if we draw, sorry again gun chart okay then what we have to do we have to allocate or we have to allot this time quantum for every process like if we start this from zero like p1 process p1 process will get cpu access for only four millisecond time or for only this particular time quantum after this P2 process will get access to the CPU. Now, if we see burst time of P2 process is 3, which is less than of this time quantum. Okay, so we'll process it for only 3 milliseconds. So that's why 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay. Now P2 process completely executed. Again, it will it will go uh, it will give access to the next process that is P3 process. Now same case here. We are having P3 process which is having less burst time which is 3. 7 plus 3, 10. Okay. We are not going to allocate 4 millisecond time to P3 process or P2 process because they require only 3 millisecond time. So we are not going to waste 1 millisecond time, a CPU time. Okay. Now after this again it will go to P1 process. Now P1 process is having burst time now 20. Okay. So again, P1 process will get 4 millisecond of time quantum. Now it will check the remaining, uh, are there any uh, process, is there any process for the execution? Though No. P2 process executed, P3 process executed completely. So again, it will go or it will give access to P1 process for next 4 millisecond. Again. Okay. So it will give access continuously to P1 process until and until, unless it will get completely executed. Okay. So after 30 millisecond, P1 process will get completely executed. Okay. Now again, for calculation of this uh, uh, waiting time and uh, turnaround time, we have to again consider this completion time concept. Okay. 